Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking into my side passion of solar generation. Hopefully in 2025 we'll be launching the sister channel talking all things solar. Hit that subscribe button to be notified when this channel goes live. But for now I'm going to be covering the topic of integrating my JK battery management system or BMS as it's called into Home Assistant. Now this is a work in progress project but I thought I'd share it with you as it's surprising the lack of documentation on this topic, especially on YouTube. For this initial video, I'll be specifically using an integration for the JK BMS created by SciC on GitHub. Links in the description. This is not the only integration and I'll be covering the alternatives in a future video. But this integration offers Bluetooth and UART-TTL communication options. I'll be focusing on the Bluetooth option and be using a generic ESP32 to achieve this. But you can try the UART TTL if you prefer hardwired. By the end of this video, you'll be able to see all your JK BMS values in Home Assistant and be able to control the charging, discharging and balancing and even configuration values. So let's break out the ESP32 and get flashing. Now I'll assume that you have ESP Home installed and integrated. This is a super simple task. Follow the link in the pop-up above or the description below if you have not already installed. I'll also assume that you have a new or used ESP32 that you can use for this project. I'm not going to be covering the piggybacking of this onto a Bluetooth proxy device in this video, but let me know in the comments if this is of interest to you. I'll also put a link to my favorite ESP32 devices in the description, but any will do. Now my first challenge was that the JK BMS does not have a MAC address for the Bluetooth on the box nor in the JK application. I'll need this so that the integration can connect to the JK BMS. Now I should be able to collect this information from my iPhone, except that Apple actively hide the Bluetooth MAC addresses, either in the iOS or via any application such as BLE Scanner, and replace this with a UUID, which is a unique identifier but not the MAC address that we need. If you use an Android phone, you can literally skip this and simply use the BLE scanner to obtain the Bluetooth MAC address. Or if you're here for the ride, then simply follow along. We'll be using the Bluetooth on the ESP32 and some scanner YAML to source the Bluetooth for the JK BMS. Luckily, SciSy already thought of this and provides this YAML code to allow us to do this. Now make sure that you are accessing your Home Assistant through a Chromium based browser such as Chrome. Open ESP Home Builder. Now press New Device in the bottom right hand corner. A new device screen will pop up. Press Continue. Give your ESP32 a name such as BLE Scanner and press Next. Select your ESP32. If in doubt, select just the standard ESP32. Double click on the encryption key. It will say Copied. Now paste this somewhere safe. Now press install. You'll be asked how you want to install the YAML to your device. We'll need to make some modifications to the YAML before installing. Press cancel. Your BLE scanner should be online. Select edit. Copy the contents and paste it somewhere safe as we'll need to reference this later. Now we need to go and get the YAML code that we'll be installing onto the ESP32. Navigate to the GitHub side for SciC, link in the description. Scroll down till you see blescanner.yaml and select. Now press the copy icon in the top right hand corner. Switch back to ESP Home Builder. Copy the YAML code that you just copied to the bottom of the displayed code. Now we will need to make one change. We need to copy the ESP32 section of code from the original YAML and copy it into the bottom section that we just copied from GitHub. Select the relevant section in the ESP32 with the following lines. Press copy. Scroll down to the code that we just obtained from GitHub. Select the ESP32 section of code and paste. We can now delete all of the old previous YAML code. Your YAML code should now start with the substitutions. Press save in the top right hand corner. Now press install. Now we'll be loading this manually. Select manual download. ESP Home will ask you what version you want to download. Select a factory format. If asked by your browser if you wish to keep the file, Press keep. You can now close out of this screen. Now press the X on the top of the YAML code. Press the three dots in the bottom right of the device. Select install. Plugged into this computer. 
Now press Open ESP Home Web. Make sure your ESP32 is plugged in. Press Connect. Select your ESP32. If it does not show up here, it probably means you don't have the appropriate drivers. I'll put a link to these in the description below. Select your ESP32. Select Connect. Now press Install. Press Choose File. Select the YAML bin file that we saved previously and press Open. Now press Install. ESP Home will erase the ESP32 and it will load in your new YAML code. Once completed, press Close. Now switch back to ESP Home Builder. Close out of the installation screen. Your BLE scanner should show online. Press Logs. Press Wireless. Your ESP32 will now scan using its Bluetooth. My JK BMS has been renamed by my daughter to Shelby. The default name of a JK BMS starts with JK. Download the log files and look for the MAC address of your JK BMS, as we'll be using this as part of the integration. Once you've completed, press close. Now we're going to go through the same installation process, but this time not download a BLE scanner, but download the JK BMS integration. Now, since we have our Bluetooth MAC address, we do not need the BLE scanner anymore. So we can repurpose our ESP32 back to what it was designed for, which is the JK BMS integration. Press the three dots in the bottom right hand corner, select delete and confirm with delete. Now we can load the JK BMS YAML code to the ESP32. Press new device, press continue. Give our ESP32 a name such as JK BMS and press next. Select what type of ESP32 it is. If you do not know, Select the ESP32 at the top, which is the default. Double click on the encryption key. Copy this somewhere safe. Now press install. As before, we're going to make some modifications to the code. Press manual download. Allow the compilation to complete. Once the compilation is completed, you'll be asked which version you wish to download. Select factory format. If your browser asks if you wish to keep the download file, press keep. Now close out of this screen. Now let's go and make the edits to the YAML code. Press edit. Copy this YAML code and put it somewhere safe. Now open up a second tab. Navigate to the GitHub page for SciSy. Now scroll down until you see ESP32 BLE example and select. Press the copy icon on the right hand side of the screen. Switch back to ESP32 Home Builder. Move to the bottom of the file. Add some hashes to show where the bottom of the file is. Paste in the code that you just copied from GitHub. Scroll down in the code until you see MAC underscore address. Change the MAC address to the one that you scanned using the BLE scanner. Scroll down until you see protocol versions. There are three different options available, JK0224S, 32S and JK04. Read the descriptions associated with each of these options and select accordingly. Again, we're going to have to change the ESP32 section of code. Copy this section of code from the original code and over paste the bottom section of code. Copy the API section of code from the original code and paste it into the bottom section of code. Copy the OTA section of code from the top and paste it into the appropriate section below. If the indentation doesn't look right, don't worry at this stage, we're going to run a validation against it so we can correct any issues that we have with the code later on. My Wi-Fi SSID and the password are both stored inside of my secrets file. I'll put a link in the description that describes how secret files work. Now we've made our changes, we can delete the old code. Your code should now start with substitutions. Press save. Now press install. Now press download manually. ESP Home will now compile the code. If there are any errors with the code, this is when they will show up. Select the version of code that you wish to download. In this case, factory format. If asked by your browser if you wish to keep the code, press keep. Now you can close out of this screen and close out of the YAML code. Now press the three dots in the bottom right hand corner of the device. Press install. Select plugged into this computer. Select open ESP home web. Select connect. Select your ESP32 and press connect. Now press install. Press choose file. Select the JK BMS file. Press open. Now press install. ESP Home will now erase the ESP32 and will load in your YAML file. Once completed, press close. Now switch back to Home Assistant. You'll notice a new notification has appeared. Press Notifications. Now press Check it out. 
Our JK BMS ESP home has now appeared and been discovered. Press add. Now press submit. Now press finish. Optionally give it an area and press finish. Now this video is already getting very long, so I won't go and have a look at the entities, but I'll jump straight to creating two sample dashboards. Now instead of developing a dashboard from scratch, I'll be using some excellent work from Diminal. I'll put links in the description to his site so you can share your appreciation. All of the entities are standard across the integration, so there should be no need to make any changes to the dashboard for them to work. The first dashboard basically uses the standard Lovelace cards. I've cut mine down for four cells for my 4S battery setup, but the configuration comes with a 16S. I'll create a new dashboard to show you how you can create this. In your new dashboard, press the plus icon for a new section. Search for and select the manual card. Now using the link in the description for example 1, column 1, open a new tab. Select all of the code and press copy. Move back to your dashboard. Select the code and overpaste the one that you just copied. A preview will show up of the dashboard on the right. Now press save. Now let's add the second column. Press the plus icon for a next section. Inside of the next section, press the plus icon for a new card. Search for and select manual. Open a new tab and navigate to example 1, column 2. The link will be in the description. Highlight all of the code and press copy. Navigate back to your dashboard. Highlight the default code that is in the manual card and overpaste with the code that you just copied. Check the preview, make sure it's correct and press save. Now press done. Now tune the dashboard to your specific needs for a four cell, eight cell or 16 cells. For example two, we do actually require an additional card. This is called the stack in card and is available from hacks. If you don't have hacks, I'll put a link in the description and in the pop-up above. Once you've installed Hacks, come back to this video. Press the Download button in the bottom right hand corner. Confirm with Download. Now press Reload. Now let's go and create our card. Navigate to a new dashboard. Press the plus icon to add a card. Search for and select the manual card. Open a new tab and navigate to the link for the sample too. Select the code and copy. Navigate back to Home Assistant. Highlight the default code and overpaste with the code that you just copied. Verify the preview is correct and press save. Now press done. You should now see the sample two dashboard. Let me know in the comments. Do you prefer sample one or sample two? So that's the JK BMS integration working over Bluetooth with two sample dashboards. Not only can you monitor and control your JK BMS remotely, but you can also track all that data and include it into graphs either by using the built-in data collection and graphing facilities within Home Assistant, or simply using the super quick Plotly, or maybe by using Influx and Grafana to get the far more sophisticated graphical dashboards. Links in the description to both. Will you be implementing this and managing your home battery solutions, or will you be implementing the UART TTL hardwired solution for quicker, more reliable readings? Let us know in the comments. And if you developed your own dashboards, then let us know, as I'm sure the community would love to leverage your findings. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I did. And if you'd like to see more material like this, or be notified when the Solar Channel comes online, then hit that subscribe button. And if I've helped you bring your JK BMS into Home Assistant, then maybe a super thanks or a PayPal donation. It's really appreciated. Until the next one.